Hola, buenos días, buenas noches, buenas tardes. Um, um, I'm going to break into English right now to just kind of tell you where I'm going with this video today. Um, it's going to be, I think, pretty short. I'm focusing on a grammar. So up until now, we've never talked about grammar. And um, the way that we teach Spanish is actually different from a lot of programs that really focus entirely on you getting the forms perfect. And we believe that your language develops just like a baby's language develops, that as the baby's language is developing, we're not concerned with telling them, no, 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 you can't say it like that. We're just letting the language develop more naturally. And that's what we're trying to do here by exposing you guys to lots and lots of input, the input that you can understand with the idea that eventually the grammar, the saying things correctly kind of works itself out. However, it is very helpful to kind of hear some specific things to kind of help you focus and go, oh, why does that have an S on it? Oh, why does that have an O on it? So I'm going to zero in a little bit on that today uh, with this expression, um, you have to do something. So in the, in the video, the mom says to the little girl, tienes que ir, you have to go. Creo que tienes una caries. I think that you have a cavity. So we're going to go over here. We're going to kind of focus on this. You have to do something. So aquí a la izquierda, yo tengo, you have to. Tienes que. And notice again that if I just say, like, you have a banana, I would say, tú tienes una banana. There would be no que there. The K happens when you say you have to do something. Otherwise, it just, it doesn't sound like you have to. That's what makes it in Spanish, make the have to, like it's an obligation. So that's one part of it. Tienes K, you have to. And then on the right here, I have a lot of different things um, that is vocabulary that we know that you could tell somebody that they have to do. So for example, you have to go to the dentist. Tienes que ir a la dentista. Or you have to, you have to decide. Tienes que decidir. And notice that the verb that I'm combining the have to with, it has an R on it. And we kind of touched on that um, last week or two weeks ago when we were working with need to and want to and can. And I said, when you put those two verbs together, the second verb has an R. So it is the same thing here. You have, you have to, and then whatever thing I'm going to have to do, I need the R on it. So that's why all of these have the R. So I'm going to leave this up for you because it's got everything you need to put together these sentences. And I'm going to say several sentences that I want you to put together. You're going to write them in a puzzle. And then we will um, talk about what you should have written. All right, so this should be easy because it's right there in front of you. So I want you to write down, you have to wash the clothes. Okay, to a screen base, you have to wash the clothes. Okay, bien. So you should have, and again, this should be super easy. Tienes que lavar la ropa. All right, um, you have to do your exercises. Escribe en el puzzle. You have to do your exercises. Okay? Es correcto. Tienes que hacer los ejercicios. And notice that we learned hacer es make, as in hacer las flores, or make the heart, hacer el corazón. But hacer can also be do, as in do the exercises. Okay? Um, you have to wait for your brother. Escribe, por favor. You have to wait for your brother. Okay? Es tienes que esperar a tu hermano. Okay. Vamos a hacer una más. Let's do one more. Um, you have to go to your live class. You have to go to your live class. Okay. Es tienes que ir a tu clase viva. Bien. Okay. So now I want you guys to look at my sentences here. So you guys have seen tango, as in the dentist says, tango un secreto. 
you have seen tienes, as in tienes que ir, and you've seen a lot of tienes. So in la historia del vampiro, el vampiro tiene miedo cuando mira la puerta, etc. So I'm curious if you have noticed this or if you have figured out even the difference between them. So I want you to look at my three examples here and see if you can figure out what is going on, why they have a different form. So, um, yo tengo un secreto. Eso dice, I have a secret. Yo tengo un secreto. Um, tú tienes mi libro. You have my book. And uh, mi mamá tiene un trabajo bueno. Quiere decir, my mom has a good job. So now I want you to look at those and see if you can figure out what, what goes with what. How do I know when I need to use tango? How do I know when I want to use tienes? And how do I know when I want to use tiene? Take a moment and write a response in at Puzzle in English and explain how I would figure that out. Okay, again, if you got the wrong answer, don't worry because I'm just asking to see if you noticed. All right, so here's the deal. If I want to say I have something, I have to use tango. And I don't know if you noticed this, but in the story, the dentist says, tengo un secreto. Doesn't say yo tengo un secreto. He says, or she says, I'm not sure, I can't tell. Tengo un secreto. So in Spanish, you are allowed to leave off this yo because the only one that goes with I have a secret is tengo. So it's obvious when it's tengo that it's I have. All right, tú tienes, you have my book. So the one that has the S on it, tienes, that goes with you. Tú tienes mi libro. And the same thing, the only one that goes with the S is you. So you are allowed to leave off this too if you want to and just say, tienes mi libro. You have my book. I need my book. Tienes mi libro. And then this is the one we've seen the most of. Mi mamá tiene un trabajo bueno. So tiene goes when you're talking about one person. One person. Okay? So I'm going to test you to see if you just understood what I just said. So in Ed Puzzle, I want you to mark the answer. So if I want to say that I have something, would I say tengo or tienes or tiene? Okay, if I want to say that my sister has something, would I say tengo or tienes or tiene? Tiene. And if I want to say that you have, you have a beautiful baby, would I say tengo, tienes, or tiene? Tienes. Okay, so now we're going to practice some more like that. All right, guys, so tengo, tienes, or tiene. So those are your choices. I have a problem. Which one would I use? Marcalo en el puzzle. Okay, so la respuesta correcta es... Ay, perdón, clase, yo tengo, perdón, yo tengo un problema. Okay, so ahora quiero decir, do you have a cavity? Now, before you write your answer, I need to address this do. This is a question do. That's the first time you've heard me say that. It's a thing. You'll be hearing me say a lot till you get used to it. In English, when we make questions, we use do and does and did a lot. Like if I say, um, you have a cavity. It's not a question. You have a cavity. And then if I want to know if you have a cavity, in English I say, do you have a cavity? But that do, that question do, it doesn't exist in Spanish. It doesn't exist in a lot of languages. So that's one of the reasons why they have that upside down question mark. So to say, do you have a cavity? It's just to, and then now you choose the right one. Is it tengo, tienes, or tiene? Okay, it should be tu tienes. Tu tienes una caries. And again, the do is not translated. So it literally says, you have a cavity? 
Pero eso es correcto. ¿Tú tienes una caries? Ok. My sister has a boyfriend. So, mi hermana, un novio. Escribe en el paso. Ok. Es mi hermana tiene. Tiene. So, talking about one person, tiene un novio. All right. Um, I have three tattoos. Escribe en el paso. Um, yo tengo, porque yo usa tengo. Yo tengo tres tatuajes. Uh, mi hermana doesn't have a computer. So, the doesn't is simply the no, right in front of the verb have. So, is it mi, arma, mi mamá? Um, no tengo, no tiene, so no tiene una computadora. Okay, es mi mamá no tiene, no tiene una computadora. Y uh, do you have my money? I can't find it. Do you have it? Do you have my money? Um, again, you're going to ignore this do. It's a question do. So to, ¿cuál es la correcta? Eh, marca, okay, es tú tienes, tú tienes mi dinero, excelente, y creo que eso es todo. Okay, no, no, no. So, now, I want you guys to write, or, or actually choose, which one is the correct answer for I have to work. So, busca en el paso la correcta. Okay, ahora vamos a chequear. I have to work. Yo tengo que trabajar. Y note que el yo es opcional. We don't have to have that. So, tengo que trabajar. Yo tengo que trabajar. Okay. So, ahora, my boyfriend has to go now. Chequen. Marcalo, por favor. Um, okay. So, mi novio tiene que. So, one person tiene And then we need the K because it has to. Mi novio tiene que ir ahora. Okay. Um, you have to listen. You have to listen. Okay. ¿Cuál es la correcta? Okay. Tú tienes que escuchar. Again, notice that my tú is in parentheses because it is optional because this S tells me already that it is you. So that tú is just kind of like extra emphasis. Tú, like you, have to listen. Tú tienes que escuchar. Y eso es todo. Bueno, muchas gracias por tu atención. I hope that wasn't too heavy. I know grammar. Sometimes some people do well and like grammar. Some people are just like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to listen to that. I try to keep it short and simple. And now that you have a little bit of background as you're looking at the things that I provide for you guys, in terms of text and listening material, just kind of notice, oh, that's why she's saying tango. That's why she's saying tienes. Um, okay, hope you have a great night. Hasta luego. Ciao.